wives and wings. What do they have in common? Probably not very much. But in today's episode of the Arabic with Sam podcast, I'd like to talk about two ayat in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses a very specific structure, a very specific use of the numbers in the Arabic language to discuss these two things. Today is a little bit of a shorter episode, I think, inshallah, um, as today uh, I'm recording this episode at about midnight, Mogadishu time, and uh, but I still wanted to get something out, inshallah, the, the goal for 2024 is consistency, put out something for the Arabic students every single day, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. So I want to talk about two ayats with you guys for us to ponder. I don't have all of the answers in terms of why Allah chooses to use this particular wording for these two particular things. But at the very least, I thought I would bring them to you and give you the explanations from an Arabic language perspective. There'll be loads to learn from an Arabic perspective and um, kind of give it to you as homework. Um, if you have the inclination, look into the, um, the, the tafasir of the explanation as to why this very unique uh, wording is used for these two particular things. So let's do it chronologically, inshallah, or, or, in, or in terms of um, how Allah has organized it in the Quran. Let's do, first and foremost, the ayah in Surah An-Nisa. This is the third ayah of Surah An-Nisa, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we won't do the entire ayah, we'll do the uh, part of the ayah in question, where Allah azza wa jalla says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فَانْكِحُوا مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ مَثْنَا وَثُلَاثَ وَرُبَاعَ Look, don't get me into trouble here, okay? I'm not, I'm not doing this to provoke anything. This is an Arabic language lesson, okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, actually, before we go into a translation of it, let me recite the other one for you as well, okay? So we had, فَانْكِحُوا مَا طَابَ لَكُمْ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ مَثْنَا وَثُلَاثَ وَرُبَاعَ Okay, now let's go to the other ayah. This is the first ayah in Surah Fatir. Where Allah Azza wa Jal says, Alhamdulillahi fatir is samawati wal undi jail il mala ikati rusul and uli ajniha uli ajniha tim methna wa thulatha warubah. In both of these ayat, what did they have in common? They both have in common this process of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using methna wa thulatha warubah. In that exact same way. And these are the only two places in the Qur'an where this occurs. So what do they mean? Okay, let's go through a translation of them. I'll do the first one, um, first and foremost. So, فَنْكِحُ This fa at the beginning, it's just a way of saying, so, so do this next thing. إِنْكِحُ إِنْكِحُ would be the singular, uh, from the verb نَكَحَ يَنْكِحُ um, So, إِنْكِحْ the ver That verb means to marry, okay? As in to perform the nikah. Um, in terms of the, the marriage contract, that's what I mean. So marry, ma taba lakum, what literally is um, pleasing to you. Taba, I believe, shares its root letters with the word tayyib, meaning kind of pure and good, tayyib. Ma taba lakum, what is good to you, lakum. Minan nisa'i, from the women. Methna, two, wa thulatha, and three, wa ruba'a, and fours, okay? Okay, bearing in mind the methna wa thulatha wa ruba'a. Okay, and then the other ayah, this one, alhamdulillahi. No prizes for, for knowing this one. Well, there is a prize because it's the best of du'as that we can make. So the prize is the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jalla. But um, from a Arabic language perspective, not really because we say it all the time. Alhamdulillahi. Praise is due to Allah. Fatir is samawati wal and. Fatir is the originator. The verb fatara is, yeah, is, is the originator. It actually has the same root letters of um, the word for when we break our fast in Ramadan. We actually use the verb aftara. You can say aftart, aftartu. I, I have broken my fast, aftartu. Yeah, aftarta, have you broken your fast? Aftarta. You might say aftir, aftir, but, but break your fast, aftir. That's a form four verb, by the way. Aftara yuftiru. Very nice. So, um, so فاطر, فاطر is the originator. What does that have to do with breaking the fast? Um, to do with opening, I think, is actually like in even in English, sometimes you hear people say, I've opened my fast, right? The, the, the idea of opening something, um, it, it's different to a khaliq, a khaliq, the verb khalaq is really about creating from nothing, but a fatir 
is the originator of, of, of something. Um, originate, although we don't use that word in English very often, I think it maybe is the best translation of um, of a fatir. So, alhamdulillahi fatir is samawat. All praise is due to Allah, fatir, the originator, of the samawati wal amd, of the heavens and the earth, or in the skies and the earth. Um, that's like a textbook idafa, fatir is samawati. Um, I believe this is actually bedel. We'd call this bedel for those of you guys who are interested. Um, because we could also say, Alhamdulillah is samawati wal ard. We could actually remove the, the, the lillahi. We could say, Alhamdulillah is or lifatir is samawati wal ard here. Um, so if you know what bedel is, then, then maybe this is an example. It's not actually a grammatical concept that I'm that familiar with, but it looks like it to me. Okay. Who? Ja'ilil. Okay. Ja'il. A ja'il from the verb ja'ala, meaning to make, but not to make as in to create something, rather to make as in to make something into something. So, for example, if I made my son into a great footballer, okay, it's like you're making something into something else. Ja'il in malaikati, the making the angels rusulan, making the angels rusul, okay, making them. Rusul, making them messengers. Uli um, um Possessing wings. Uli ajniha. So all praise is due to Allah, the originator of the heavens and the earth, the maker of the angels as messengers with wings. Okay. Rusulan uli ajniha. Methna wa wa Two, three, and four. Now, can you have three wings? Not really. You'd be lopsided. You'd be flying in kind of, well, you know, one direction, right? So I believe a meaning of this is that it's sort of in twos and threes and fours. Methna wa thulatha wa ruba. But it's um, it's a very interesting sort of um, use of the numbers because when we think about the use of the numbers generally in the Arabic language, the most kind of simple ones that we use are for two, three, and four. Ifnan and ifnatan, you know. For for two or if natain and and uh, if nain, depending on case, and then thalathaton or thalathon, and then arba or or arbaaton, right? Arbaaton or arbaaton if you're saying the case endings, right? But ruba and thulath and methna, these aren't like the most these aren't the most frequently used types of numbers. Right? In fact, it's hard to even get these types of numbers into a typical Arabic curriculum because when we teach the sort of cardinal numbers and ordinal numbers, th these types of numbers don't really fit into it. Um, in fact, like w we only really learn like thulath and ruba when we learn about thulathi verbs and rubari verbs. That is to say, thulathi verbs is what we mean when when we talk about verbs that have three root letters: thulathi, fi'il, thulathi, for example. Kataba or qara'a or ja'ala for that matter or fatara for that matter and rubari verbs al afal rubariya or fi'l rubari in the singular meaning quadriliteral you know verbs like tarjama to translate it has four root letters ta ra jim and mim tarjama or the verb zalzala meaning to quake like an earthquake or rafrafa meaning to to flap or ruffle maybe rafrafa Having four root letters. Yes, so um, I mean, I'm I'm kind of going to go into sort of a pondering m mode, perhaps. I won't spend too much time on that. The Arabic language was the main thing, but the homework for you guys is to just ponder upon it a little bit um, with methna wa thulatha wa Also, perhaps the use of wow even is interesting. It's not ejni hatim methna aw thalatha aw ruba'a. It's not two or three or four. Oh, sorry, that brings me back to the point I was making, actually, about angels not having three wings, right? Like, perhaps it is meaning that it has pairs of wings, two pairs of wings, three pairs of wings, or four pairs of wings, right? Because, yeah, because it, it could mean that, like, in twos, in their wings are in twos, they're in threes, and in fours, which which makes sense, right? But, but going back to what I was saying about or, right, usually when we talk about, particularly about the AM, uh, about, um, about marrying multiple women, right? Like, we would think it would be married two or three or four. Not two, and then three, and then four, right? Although, I wouldn't put it past, um, 
Yeah, I'm sure there have been people who have interpreted it in such a manner and ended up with mefna, wathulatha, waruba. What is it? <laughs> you know, what is it? Yeah, nine wives or whatever. Mefna, wathulatha, waruba. Very nice. I mean, I suppose we'll end with this actually anyway, because whenever any anybody quotes this or, or anything similar, they'll say, well, why don't you finish the ayah? When you finish the ayah. So, yes, it does continue. For إِنَّ خِفْتُ مَنْ لَا تَعَدِلُوا فَوَاحِدًا And, and so if you, if you fear that you, أَنْ لَا تَعَدِلُوا That you will not have adil. You will not, you will not ta'adilu. You will not do with, with justness. You will not do justly. Um... Adil is someone who's sort of upright and just. If you're not do justly with them, fawahida. There's no mention of equal there. Um, yeah, it's often mentioned about you have to treat them equally or something. It's there, there's absolutely zero mention of equality or equalness anywhere in there. Um, it is ta'adilu. It is that you be just towards them. Fawahida. So if you're unable to do that, then only wahida. That is better. Um, okay, very nice. That's... um. I think that's plenty for today, inshallah. Probably a short episode just for us to ponder over two ayat and some specific um, language use in the Quran, which I think is really interesting. See you in the next one. Assalamu alaikum.